Liverpool nil, Arsenal nil. But that doesn't tell any of the story. Let's get into it. Five at five. Number one, this was the blueprint in terms of how to play with 10 men. Liverpool away from home. Injury after 11 minutes, a red card after 24 minutes and all of that on top of an already depleted squad, especially after Liverpool with their false positives managed to move the game to suit them and their squad management. It was nothing short of phenomenal what we did yesterday and it deserves a lot of credit. And yes, we drew. I get that. We're talking about it as if it was a victory. But do you know what? The reason why it feels so good is that this is the first time in many, many years I can see Arsenal go down to 10 men and not roll over and have your belly tickled. Way too often when we've gone down to 10 men, we have nothing to really hang up our belief on that we can keep a clean sheet and get something from the game. But yesterday, it was actually very interesting to me because in the first 10 minutes, I noticed that Lacazette was really getting on to Sambi Conga. He was telling him, kind of getting stuck into him verbally a little bit. Xhaka and Gabriel, they were going at it a little bit. The plan didn't really seem to be working because Liverpool started pressing and started off really, really well from minute one. But it seemed to me is that when we went down to 10 men, it actually really focused the team. They knew they're not going to be able to do much going forward. So they all have to raise their game and work really, really hard. And after we had that red card in the 24th minute, I saw nothing but just players working together and fighting together. And it made me proud. Usually, when Arsenal keep a clean sheet, we expect Aaron Ramsdale to have pulled off some amazing saves and to have worked quite hard. But yesterday, as we know, Liverpool only had one shot on target. And not only that, Aaron Ramsdale had quite a shaky game, probably his shakiest game in an Arsenal shirt. He was slightly at fault for the Minamino chance, slightly at fault when Ben White had to clear it off the line. And also, Aaron Ramsdale usually takes a lot of pressure off the team with his really perfect distribution. What I did like about him yesterday was that he kept on going long. He did not want to invite the press, didn't want to invite pressure. It was the right decision. But that meant that his passing accuracy or his pass completion was a very low 16%. In spite of that, in spite of him not having the best game, Arsenal still managed to keep the clean sheet. And a lot of that was due to Alex Lacazette, Martinelli and Bukayo Saka running themselves ragged into the ground. An absolutely perfect 10-man performance. And Arteta, after the game, said... He wants a team where he feels like he can go to war with them. And the team showed him exactly that. A performance to be proud of. And let's hope we play this well when it's 11 on 11 at home. Because in that case, I really fancy our chances of getting through to the final against Chelsea. Number two, it's got to be Granit Xhaka. We have to talk about the red card. And it's a shame because the story of the game should really be all about the defensive performance and how well we did and how resolute we were. But we were put into that position through another reckless moment by Granite Xhaka. So let's talk about that red card. And I want you guys to let me know where you stand on Granite Xhaka. Do you think that actually, like some people claim, he's one of our most important midfielders or our most important midfielder and we really miss him when he's not there? Or do you feel as though, listen, he just produces too many errors that really cost the team too often? You know, yeah, he might have five good games and then it will be a red card. Five good games and then an error that leads to a goal. So let me know where you stand. As for the red card, I can't deny it. If someone did that to, let's say, Bukayo Saka, if that was Van Dijk on Saka, I'd be livid if a red wasn't given. You have to admit, yeah, fine, it was a red card. But what I don't understand about Granit Xhaka is that in that moment, Surely you know you're not going to have a free run at that ball. You are going to be challenged by a Liverpool player. Now, if you have got even that little awareness where you realise you're going to be challenged, you can't put your foot that high. So I don't understand what Granit Xhaka was doing. You have to do it in a different way. Try and get your head to the ball. Try and get your shoulder in front of the player. And then it can look more like a coming together rather than a foul. But with this you're giving the referee a really, really easy decision to make. And not only that, even if you try and get your shoulder across the player and disrupt him somehow, then yes, it might be a denial of a goal-scoring opportunity, but you don't give the referee that dangerous foul play decision to make, which 
can dictate whether you get a two-game ban or a four-game ban now because it's his second red of the season. Again, he's let us down. But look, the one thing I would say in his defence is that unlike the red card early running the season against Man City, where I felt like he really let his team down in a selfish way, on this occasion, he was trying to do the right thing. It's just a massive flaw in his game that he doesn't have that awareness. We even saw Aaron Ramsdale in that moment go and then back off from the challenge because he obviously assessed the risk and thought, no, it's too risky to try and challenge Diogo Jota in that moment. Granite Xhaka just does not have that risk filter. Let me know in the comments below how you stand on Granite Xhaka and whether you think he's a crucial, crucial part of the team or whether he causes too many problems and we need to get rid Number three, and back to positives here, because after Granit Xhaka got sent off, other people stepped up and they had to. You have to raise your game and no one did it more than Ben White. You look at his game by numbers, three tackles, three blocks, three interceptions, five clearances. And of those five clearances, one of them was a very, very crucial goal line clearance, where if he didn't do that, then all of that effort could have been undone and a 1-0 Liverpool victory would have been secured. Ben White yesterday was absolutely brilliant and he's the sort of player where a lot of people because of his ball playing abilities question his defensive abilities and yesterday he only had 41 touches in the game. That's not a lot for a Ben White typical performance and I think he proved that actually he has got that other element to his game where he can get stuck in and be a proper defender first absolutely superb performance for Ben White and it's been quite a while since I heard people mention how much he cost us and when people stop talking about that you know it's always a good sign well done Ben White number four and I want to just give three unsung players some credit here firstly Callum Chambers this is only his fifth appearance this season three as a starter two as a sub and to come on away from home against Liverpool and then 10, 15 minutes after you come on, you're down to 10 men. That's a very, very difficult job. And boy, it would have tested him. But I thought he stood up to the test really well. Callum Chambers, really well done. Another one is Sambi Lakonga. Obviously a very difficult time out against Nottingham Forest last time. And he comes in in a midfield. And it's already going to be a difficult assignment. You're playing next to Granite Xhaka. You're up against Milner, Fabinho, Henderson. And you know you're going to get stretched and pressed a lot. And then that's it. You're playing majority of the game with 10 men because your midfield partner gets subbed off. Sambi Lakonga didn't start very well, but I thought he grew into the game and ended up playing quite well against that team in what was a very, very difficult test for him. So again, well done Sambi Lakonga. Good bounce back against Liverpool from that Nottingham Forest game. And talking about bounce backs from the Nottingham Forest game, none more so than Nuno Tavares. He only came on in the 81st minute. But still, I think this is exactly what he needed after that horror show and after being substituted in quite a humiliating way. What I would say as well, I think it was a really good decision from Mikel Arteta to bring him in and let him just be part of that brilliant team ethic and that brilliant team performance. Because now that it just feels like that Nottingham Forest game is a little bit more distant in the story of Nuno Tavares. So I'm happy for Nuno. I thought he responded really well and good man management there from Mikel Arteta, which is something that I really like to see. Number five, and this is the North London derby and our midfield problems. This is a huge game against Tottenham in the North London derby. Two games they've got in hand over us and they're two points behind us. If we win, yes, they've got the two games, but it's five points the gap. That's sort of achievable. We can defend that. But if they win, they're one point ahead of us with two games in hand. And then it starts to look like they're favourites to finish above us. We absolutely cannot afford to lose this game. And Tottenham will probably feel the same way. So who knows, it might be destined for a draw. Let me know what your predictions are for that North London derby game in the comments below. And also, who are we going to play in midfield? This is a scary thought, to be honest with you, because Xhaka, as we know now, is suspended. Partey, Elneny, both out. Erdegaard, Covid, ESR, we don't know if he'll be fit. It's looking like a bit of a mess. Lokonga surely will have to come back in. I don't think we can stick Patino in for a game like this away from home. We might have to put a man of the match against Liverpool, Ben White, into midfield. Callum Chambers might have to come back in. I am nervous. It's going to be a very interesting lineup when it gets released. I'm just praying that we get some good news with ESR and potentially even with Martin Erdegaard. But 
what it does tell me is that we need midfield reinforcements. I really hope the club can do something. Interestingly, we have apparently recalled uh, Aziz from Portsmouth. So I wonder if he'll be on the bench maybe somewhere. But again, he's a young player and not someone that you'd expect to be calling on um, for a North London derby, and especially one as crucial as this. Let me know what you think the midfield should be and also your predictions for the game. And I'll see you after the derby. Take care.